Hey guys, coming here with eTrailer and today we're going to be taking a look at Kurt's RV Towing Starter Kit. The good thing about this RV Towing Starter Kit is it's going to give you the basics of what you actually need to tow that trailer or that camper. It's going to give you some friction sway control so that if you have just a mild amount of sway you can still adjust and kind of fix that up and just get that trailer centered behind you. It's going to give you a rocker ball ball mount which is going to give you a little bit more of adjustability as well because that rocker ball is going to go back and forth kind of eat up some of that back and forth play that you'll get as your trailer kind of lurches forward or stops and when you're hitting those bumpy roads you're not going to have all that play in it another nice thing about this kit is it's going to come with an anti-rattle hitch pin that's going to prevent that ball mount from moving and rattling and making all kinds of noise on top of that we also have our kurt echo brake controller that's going to allow us to actuate the brakes on our trailer. So all in all, it's going to give you all the basics that you need, all in one easy to get kit. Our Kurt Rocker Ball Ball Mount is going to be compatible with two inch hitches. It's going to come with a two and five sixteenths inch ball. And it's going to have our Rocker Ball Isolator, which is going to rock back and forth. And that's going to help prevent all that vibration and kind of chucking back and forth that you might get with your trailer as you're going down bumpy roads. And that's just gonna give you an overall more smooth ride. It does have grease that you can actually get into here using the grease circle on the bottom of our ball. And that's gonna help lubricate it and keep it rolling back and forth so that we have a nice comfortable ride. On the side here, you can see that it also comes with a plate so that we can hook in a friction sway control ball. So if you're new to camping or if you are in the market of renting out your camper and you just want to make sure that you have the correct components to actually tow that trailer, the RV towing kit from Kurt is going to be a great solution for you. Installation of this kit is super simple. Um, only a few pieces here, really easy to do. Kurt didn't give you anything that's really hard to install. You can easily do this with the tools that you have at your house. But let's go ahead and show you how we got each of these components in place. So with our kit, we're gonna have this anti-rattle hitch pin, and what we're gonna do is with this little tab right here, we're gonna want that facing out through the backside of our ball mount here, and we're gonna line up that nut with our hitch pin hole. So we'll slide this down. You may have to just kind of squeeze on that just because it does wanna kind of fight you going in. What I like to do is just kind of stick my finger in there and get it to line up real easy with that. Now we're going to go ahead and line up our hitch pin hole on our ball mount with our hitch pin hole on our trailer hitch. We'll then take this little sleeve off of our hitch pin. We're going to put this in with the side with that nut. So I'm going to slide our uh, smooth piece through and then it's going to get to those threads on that. So we're going to start with it right off the bat, threading into that. Now you may need a uh, five, six, or 15 16 wrench just to get this tightened up. Okay, loose enough now, I can kind of push it through. And then the other side, we're gonna take this bushing and we'll just slide that in. We have to kind of wiggle it around to get it right. And then we'll come back with our socket wrench and tighten it down. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna press on this so that we're not getting that rattle. And all we have to do is just take our clip and pop it on. So we're gonna go ahead and take our ball for our sway control and we'll slide that right onto the tab that already comes with our rocker ball ball mount and put that up on there. We'll just get that hand tight and then we're gonna take our 15 16 socket and our channel locks and we're just gonna grip right on there and we're gonna tighten this down until that locking washer just starts to compress down we're not torquing this down or anything like that you'll see that it's kind of smashed flat that's going to be good enough to hold that on there so the next part of our installation we're going to have to take our tape measure we're going to get the center of our coupler and we're going to go back 24 inches so 24 inches comes out to about right here i'm going to take my paint marker i'm going to make just a little notch so now that I had the little mark there, I know I can come back to that and center my ball right on top of that. And now, because I don't have self-tapping screws, I'm gonna have to go ahead and drill out some holes. So I'm just gonna make little marks here. 
with our paint marker so I can drill that out. And then also I'm gonna hold up my spacer plate on that as well. And do the same for this because this is also gonna have to be mounted to the tongue of our trailer. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take my 11 30 seconds drill bit and I'm gonna drill out our holes. So now I'm gonna hold up my spacer plate and get that bolted on. I have to loosen that up just a bit to kind of get the other ones in. Sneak it in. Now we can go ahead and put our ball on. All right, now that that's in place, we can go ahead and hook on our actual sway control. Now that we have our ball in place on our trailer tongue and then also on our actual ball mount, we can go ahead and Loosen that up just a bit. You want to make sure that you take the pressure off of your uh, sway control before hooking up. That way that piece can actually slide out. It'll attach to both balls. And then we can go ahead and put our clips in place. So just pop in. Or not. There we go. And same thing with the back side. Just pop that right into place. And then we can start twisting our lever here, getting it nice and tight. As we go clockwise, this is gonna tighten down on here and give us more control. So you can go ahead and kind of set it to what you'd like and then go test it. And if you need to make some adjustments, maybe loosen it up. As you can see on the little label here, it'll tell you if you're going over this way, it's gonna be less. And if you keep doing it clockwise, it's gonna be more tension on that. So installation of your Kurt Echo is as simple as popping it right into your seven way. And when you pull down, there is a, or push it in all the way, there is a little lip right there that's gonna hook up to the lip on your seven way cover. That's gonna prevent it from popping out. And then we can go ahead and hook on our seven way from our trailer and push that in. And same concept, it, lip on that's gonna hold that in place. And later on, when we download our app and hook up with that, we have our pin number in here as well as on a little card with your owner's manual to fully ensure that this is gonna sit in here. We're gonna also run our strap through it. We wanna make sure that we have that little ball sticking out. That way, when we pull this through and push it back up through our other side, that the strap can actually click onto it. You're gonna have a few different holes right here to get it nice and tight. We'll hold that in place and that's going to really help prevent this from wagging around as much and taking that chance of this falling out. So once you download your Kurt app, it's going to ask you for permission to use your location and Bluetooth. Once you get past that, it's going to have you do a few things to get it started. There are going to be some terms of service that you'll have to accept. We already have our Echo plugged in with our trailer, so we can hit continue. We can connect via Bluetooth, so we're going to scan for that. So once our pairing is successful, we can go ahead and continue. Here you can see that you can set up different profiles. This is really important if you tow multiple trailers or if you just have different kind of sensitivity settings, if you want to set it, you know, maybe you have one control or one trailer that's a little bit heavier than another one. You can set those settings a little bit higher, but uh, for ours right now, we're just going to continue to our application profiles so once you get into your profile you can go ahead and change your max output your sensitivity and then also you can turn on your hazard lights if needed our big orange button right here is going to be our manual override if i go ahead and i press that down you can see that the brakes are being applied if i also put my car into gear and have my foot on the brake pedal you can see that the brakes are also being applied let me throw that back in the park our max output goes from a setting of 5 up to 100 in increments of 5, so you can easily switch up or back down. 
you need to. I recommend just starting out at 50 and then just kind of seeing how it goes, turning it up or down as needed. Same thing with your sensitivity adjustment, but that goes just from one up to nine. So I'm gonna leave that in the middle and we can just pull this around. Right now our trailer doesn't really have too much weight in it, so we really don't need to have our settings too high. But we can go ahead and I'll also show you the manual override. We'll pull our trailer out and just get a little bit of motion here. So I'm just rolling right now. I got my foot off of the brake. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the manual override. And as you can see, it's pulling us down and stopping us. And that's without any help from our truck's brakes. So if we hit our little button up there, we can go and switch to some of the other settings. We can go to our sync devices, and that's gonna allow us to sync up to our controller or disconnect from it. Maybe you're having an issue with it and you just need to kind of restart it. You can go ahead and disconnect and then reconnect it. Uh, we can hit our active profile. That brings us back to our profile that we were using last and lets us use our braking settings. We can go to our profile list, which is, has all of our profiles, and then we can go ahead and adjust those settings as needed. We can go to our controller settings, and that's gonna let us change whether we have a light or a dark profile. So we have our echo manual override button. You can click on that, and that'll also search for the manual override, or you can go down to the instructions and user guides, and that's gonna get, just give you a little bit of help if you're having any issues with your controller, kind of help troubleshoot some stuff, and then also kind of walk you through your settings as well. But for our purposes today, we're just gonna go ahead and go back to our active profile, and as you can see, we're right back to where we need to be. I do recommend getting a stand or something for your phone so you can kind of have it somewhere easy to reach. That way you can easily hit on that if you need to. If you start experiencing some trailer sway, you can go ahead and hit that override button. Um, Kurt does recommend only having this on. You don't want to have it in the background because there's a chance that you won't be able to easily hit that override button if the need arises. So it's a little hard to see just because of the way this seven way is set up on our Silverado today, but there is a light on the top of our Echo, which you can see reflected on the cap of our seven way. And it's going to be a green light. And when it's solid green, you know that you're all hooked up, you're ready to go. If it's blinking, you still need to do some setup and make sure that your Kurt Echo is ready to go with your app and that your trailer brakes are all set to go before taking off. Well, I think that about does it for today's look at the Kurt RV towing starter kit. My name's Kevin. Thanks for watching.